Hey gang, this is Kirk with Fauna, and today we are going over document types, field definitions, and schema enforcement. Document types enable you to codify and enforce the shape of the data you want for your collection. Things like what fields can a document in this collection have, what values those fields can have, whether they are optional, can a document have fields not part of that required fields, and so on. To put it another way and use an example, we create a collection named product and name what the product documents in that collection must look like structure-wise, or else a non-conforming write and update operations are rejected. First up, let's talk about field definitions. With this, you can find fields for documents in a collection as one or more data types, a reference to another document, enumerated values, or a wildcard constraint. You can even set if the listed fields in JSON documents for this collection must be present, optional, or even constraints in which fields must be unique. Let's look at some Fauna Schema language to see what I'm talking about. Here I define a collection name order, and it has five fields and one wildcard constraint. The user field must be present and a reference to a document in the user collection. If you're not familiar with references in Fauna, it's how you create relationships between documents and how you're able to traverse those relationships. In this case, we're referencing the user document in the user collection so that we know this order is related to that user. Next up is the cart field. In this case, we're saying that it must be present. It has to be an array of references to documents in the product collection. So it's got to be the products that make up that cart. The address field must also be present, but it can either be a string or it can be a reference to a document in a collection named address. The name field is optional and it can be null. That's what that little question mark there at the end of the string means. But if it is present, it must be of type string. The status field is non-nullable, but must be one of the enumerated values you see listed here. And if it's not present, it defaults to in progress. Meaning if it's you write a document that doesn't have status, it is going to put in there in progress as the value for that. And finally, you have a wildcard constraint, but more on that here shortly. Once the schema is in place, if you try to write or update a document in the order collection and the new document violates the structure, that transaction is rejected by the database. You could also make this collection have a strict schema where documents must have these fields and only these fields. If the document has additional fields, that transaction is rejected. Which brings us to wildcard constraints. There are three ways to think about and work with wildcard constraints. First up, you can have a collection definition with no field definitions. This is an implied wildcard constraint. You could put it explicitly in there with the asterisk colon any, but it's not necessary. Second, you can have a wildcard constraint along with other fields defined in a collection definition. This tells Fauna that it's okay for incoming documents in this collection to be flexible. This means that the document must adhere to the defined fields creating that schema for this collection, but that the presence of the wildcard constraint means that additional ad hoc fields can be in that document. And finally, if you have a collection with field definitions but no wildcard constraint, this is what's called a strict schema. This means the document in the order collection must adhere to the schema provided, and they cannot have ad hoc fields. To go back to the example of the order collection with that wildcard constraint, any document in the order collection can have additional fields not listed in this defined schema, but they are not checked by Fauna. So you get the best of both worlds here. In the same document, you can have the flexibility and schema control enforcement with those fields when you need it, but also have the extensibility of adding ad hoc fields when you need that too. The best part about this is you don't have to do this all at once or at the beginning. You can add this functionality as you go. This is something that Fauna calls gradual typing, where you can add these features as you need them, when you need them, and we have tools that will help with migrations from one version of your schema to the next version of your schema and manage the whole thing for you. These are what we call zero downtime migrations, but that's a topic for another video. Thanks for watching, and if this video helped you out, please make sure to give it a like, and see you in the next video.